Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. We'll be right back to the show. But before we do, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Factor Mills. Dot com, where if you go to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50, you can get 50% off your first order. That's factormills.com slash unbroken50. If you're like me and you are a person who is busy trying to create a life, heal, work on their health, wealth, and relationships, and not to mention deal with the day-to-days of normal life, you do not have time to be going to the grocery store and trying to figure out what you're going to cook every single day of the week. In fact, one time I did the math and I realized I was spending over 15 hours a week at the grocery store and cooking. When I added factor, I got to use that time for myself, for my family, for my friends, for my community, and for my business. And so if you're in the place where you need some more support in the kitchen, head to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50 to get 50% off. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show. But I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? Hope that you're doing well wherever you are in the world today. I'm very excited to be back with you with another episode with my guest, Kent Ober. Clint, how are you today, my friend? What is happening in your world? Well, I'm doing pretty good, Michael. I'm sitting out here in Southern California. The, the weather's pretty nice from now, and uh, um, it's that season of the year that I really enjoy, so I'm pretty content. 
Good. That's a good place to be, my friend. I, yes. I discovered you a few years ago on a Mutual Friends podcast, and it really got me thinking about so many of the differentiations of life and in the way that we live now versus the way that we used to. As society changes, technology advances, we live in the electronic world. And right. uh, I'm very excited to have this conversation with you. But before we dive in, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got to where you are today. Okay, well, um, I'm 78 years old, so I've been around a long time. <laughs> and But I started out, I grew, I grew up in Montana uh, as an outdoor cowboy. That's a boy that sits on a horse and rides around the pasture watching, looking at the cows, make sure they're healthy and, and make sure they're okay. And as long as they are, then, you know, um, yeah, you, you can make a, make a living doing that. But, but Ben, you know, I saw it, it primarily, um, I, I spent a lot of time in nature and in the early days, um, you know, growing up, um, I was taught prevention, taking care of animals, taking care of animals in the wild and, and, and the livestock and so on. But it's always about prevention. You keep the pasture clean and pristine, then the cattle will be healthy, and then you can make a profit. If they get sick, you got to call the vet. You have to call the banker at the same time, because after that, the vet and the bank own the cows. So, so true. So that's kind of where the background I come from. So prevention is something that's ingrained in me. And I come from the 40s, so back then we didn't have all the institutions, all the medical, all the pills. We didn't have all the stuff that we have today. So you pretty much had to take care of yourself and take care of your health. And uh, eat an apple a day, keep the doctor away was the mantra. So anyhow, um, after I left that environment, I ended up falling in love with the communications industry, uh, the cable television industry. I'm one of the official pioneers of the cable mm. industry. And in that industry, we have to ground everything electrical to the earth. We have to ground the cables to the earth um, uh, before. Uh, we enter a home uh, to, in case there's any lightning or static or noise or electrical interference in the area, and um, <clears throat> and to prevent you know lightning from entering the home and creating a fire. So uh, grounding. So I learned about grounding. Everything electrical has to be grounded um, <clears throat> in in the entire electronics and communication industry. Grounding is a very big thing. It has to do with electrical stability. So you get good, clean signals, good, clean pictures, good, clean data for your computer, and so on and so on. Um, so I spent about 30 years in that industry. So to me, I took grounding you know, for granted. Um, you, know, you, you ground everything in order to maintain electrical stability and, and have prevent fire and have clean pictures. So, uh, and that was all good and never thought too much about it. But I retired from the cable industry when I was 50, 20, 29 years ago. And um, the reason I retired was because I had a serious health um, situation. I developed a um, abscess in the liver from a root canal that was done. And I ended up losing the large, larger portion of my liver. And uh, they didn't know at that time this is you know, long time ago. Um, but they didn't know for sure back then how much of the liver they could remove and how, if you could survive. And I was, I was in, on a very marginal area. But anyhow, I did um, go through with the surgery. I did uh, survive. And in the process, because it was, it could have gone either way uh, at that time. Uh, but anyhow, I remember one of the um, the docs told me when they discovered what was wrong, he said, you need to go home and get your health in or get your house in order because we don't know how much of the liver they can work with. And, and so the, anyhow, you know, it's a long story, but anyhow, I, I send, I ended up, uh, well, they ended up saying, first of all, you know, there, there's a chance you may not make it. So you have to have your, your affairs in order. And so I went home and did that, but it was kind of a shock because all of a sudden, you know, you're, here you are, a 50-year-old man, king of the mountain. Uh, everything's going good. And uh, you live in a five-thousand-square-foot, eight-frame home in Evergreen, Colorado. I can see all the way to Vail. 
And, um, but anyhow, um, so I, I, rec when I in, was in the process of recovering from that, I ended up, um, uh, just coming into terms with life. And the main thing that hit me was that, you know, if I had died, my children would have come and taken some of the things in the home. Uh, and I had a huge collection of art and, and I got to thinking, well, nobody would have ever have known why I purchased anything or why I did anything in my life when it come to material things. And so I, I called them all up and I said, I want you to come and get whatever you want. And then I'm going to give away everything else because I, what I realized in a moment while I was going through all of this is that, you know, when you die, you don't take any of this stuff with you. I mean, and, and, um, and you spend your whole life collecting on these things and your life is about these things, but they really, um, what's going to happen to them when you're gone, you know, the kids are going to take them or get rid of them or donate them or all these things. So it's kind of a shocking thing. And so I had this kind of an epiphany where I went through this thing where I, I all of a sudden I didn't want to own anything ever again. I just, I just wanted to get rid of everything I own because it, it just put fear in me. And I, I didn't want to own anything because I felt that when I ended up, I was being responsible for all these things I have collected. And, and, um, but I had, my life was about acquiring things, taking care of things. And, and, uh, so, so anyhow, I, I just went, had this epiphany that I didn't want to own anything. I wanted to let go of everything. And I wanted to make my life about something more important, something that had significance or not significance to anybody else in the world. Because when you die, you die alone. There's nobody there with you. And, and but I wanted to be happier the next time I die or come close to dying. Um, I want to be able to be happy with myself. Feel like I was here, uh, something other than a great consumer. <laughs> I wanted to um, do things that I, I wanted to be of service. I wanted to be of help. So anyhow, after that, I sold everything. I sold the house I, and, and I bought a small RV. And I spent four years traveling around the United States, just going from national parks because that's where I felt the best. And <clears throat> I was single. I was... Uh, just kind of alone. My children are all, all out on their own. And anyhow, so I ended up down in Key Largo, Florida on the bay, bay side of the Gulf down there. And I'd been there for a few months. And, and I, um, one night I was kind of, because I'm a nature boy, I, I just have a lot of nature in me. And, but I felt like, you know, I needed to go back to work. I needed to go do something worthwhile. I didn't know what to do. But I was, <clears throat> I was just standing there looking out and over the bay, and I had this feeling come over me, and these words came to my mind. The first one was, you know, uh, become an opposite charge. To me, being an electrical background, that means go out and poke people or stir them up or do something, get them excited, uh, like rounding up the cows, go charge them up. <laughs> And, and then about a half hour later, I wrote down a second thing that just popped into my mind, you know, status quo is the enemy. Mm. Didn't have, didn't know what to think about any of it. So, I, but I wrote it down on a yellow piece of paper, still have it 30 years, almost, you know, 20 some years later. And, um, yeah. so anyhow, I didn't think too much about it, but I had a feeling come over me that I had to go back West, uh, where I was from back in, you know, California, Arizona and Montana. And so I had to go back and, and do something. So I headed back. And when I got there, I, you know, first of all, I went to San Diego that didn't feel comfortable. Then I ended up going back to Tucson and that didn't feel right. So I thought, well, I'll go to Flagstaff, Arizona, because they have pine trees and snow like Montana. It's cold, kind of something I'm used to. And, um, uh, on the way up, uh, I, I headed up there, uh, late in the afternoon from Phoenix and, and it got late in the day. And so it was about 10 o'clock. I said, well, I'm not going to go any further. There's a little sign that pointed to Sedona, Arizona, it was a campground sign. And so I said, well, I'll just pull in there and drive up to Flagstaff in the morning. Well, anyhow, I woke up the next morning and 
I looked out the window and I said, wow, this, I'm not leaving here. This is like living in a national park. So I spent a couple of years in Sedona. And while I was there, I um, <clears throat> accidentally ended up getting involved in the art gallery business or the art galleries, uh, helping them light up their, their art shows and so on. So I started working with electrical again. And, and, uh, uh, and I owned a lot of art, so I knew that art needs to be presented properly in order for people to appreciate what the artist is trying to present. And so I started doing some professional lighting for these, they, they, nobody could pay for it, they didn't have enough money, but, but I loved lighting art. Um, so anyhow, one day I was ordering some stuff on a computer and the computer kept crashing. This is back in the late nineties. And, um, you didn't have a lot of good internet or anything like that, but anyhow, the, the computer kept crashing. So every time it would crash, I'd have to shut it down, bring it back up and then try to order my stuff. And so anyhow, I realized that it was static electricity that was causing the glitches on the computer because the computer wasn't grounded or anything back then. And so anyhow, I, I laid a strip of copper tape across the, my desk. And I connected it to an electrical ground. And then I would touch the copper strip before I touched my keyboard to get rid of the static on my body from the dry air there. And, and then I could type away and everything was fine. Um, solved the problem. And so my grounding came back. So a few minutes later, I walked outdoors and I sat down on a bench across from Tilakapaki, which is a tourist area there in Sedona. And a big tour bus pulls up. And in this, and this is a Japanese tour group and they're a little shorter in stature, but, um, and, but anyhow, so when they started marching off the bus, they all had white Nike tennis shoes on, like they were, like they had been to a strip mall that had Nike shoe or Nike, um, tennis shoes on or athletic shoes on sale. But anyhow, they were big, they seemed big. And so anyhow, I. I just looked at it and I didn't, don't know where this came from. It was intuitive. So I asked myself, I wonder if there's a consequence to humans no longer being naturally grounded. Cause when I was a kid, you know, in the forties and the early fifties, we were barefoot all the time. We never wore shoes unless we were going to school or church or some event. And, and the shoe, and when we did wear shoes, they were leather. So we had to. If it rained, we had to carry them, uh, so they didn't get wet because if they got wet, then they'd curl up and, start, and then you get in trouble when you got home. Um, so, so anyhow, um, I didn't know. And so I went home that night and I did the same thing that I did with the computer at home. I, I, first of all, I went around the house and took a meter and started measuring all of the electrical charges, like static electricity, EMF just all of the electromagnetic interference or electromagnetic, uh, noise that's in our homes. It's everything from airplanes to police cars to, I mean, it's just relentless today. And then we had cell phones, cell phones on it today. Uh, so if you could see frequencies, you wouldn't be able to see anything because everything would be pitch black <laughs> because there's so much noise out there. So anyhow, in the process, I went home that night and I started playing around and I started measuring all these frequencies on my body when I was walking around the house. So I went back to the hardware store, bought a roll of three inch wide metal duct tape, brought it home, laid it across my bed. There's more to the story, but laid it across my bed, threw a ground wire out the ground, out the window, connected it to the earth. And then I went in and laid down on the tape. And then as long as I was laying on the tape, then I was shielded or protected from all of these electromagnetic, uh, frequencies and fields and so on. And the, the thing that happened when I laid down that night, I was back then I was 54 or something like that. And I had, you know, being a cowboy, I skied for 30 years, played tennis. I've done everything. And my body was full of aches and pains all the time, chronic. <laughs> um, you know how men are, you know, no, no, no pain, no gain. Um, so, so anyhow, I, um, laid it across my bed and I laid down on that tape and I was playing with a voltmeter. And then the next thing I knew it was morning 
And I thought, wow, there's something going on here because normally I can't fall asleep. I had to take Advil to go to sleep or I had to take some kind of a pain med because I had so much chronic pain. And I was at that 50 plus age. And uh, so anyhow, I played with it for a couple of days and it kept, I, again, at night, I would, as long as I was laying on the tape, the grounded metal that was connected to the earth, then I was, my body was grounded. I could test it with a meter and see that I was at earth potential. And then I would automatically fall asleep better. And then a couple of days after that, I got a hold of one of my buddies who I was running, spending time with there with helping me light the galleries and stuff. And he had arthritis and he had, you know, a lot of pain in his body. And I said, and he could get, couldn't sleep. And I said, well, I, you need to try this. And I said, it sounds crazy, but you got to try this. So I went and put some tape on his bed and his wife almost threw me out of the house. But anyhow, so hooked it up and he laid on it that night. And he, next, I didn't hear anything from him for a couple of days, but he got a hold of me and he said, you know, he said, do you think this could be having any, could have any effect on my arthritis? And I says, no, I think it's just makes the noise go away. And then you sleep better and your nervous system is quieter and so on. And he said, well, my arthritis is way down. Then I realized that my chronic pain was almost gone. And then I said, okay, how come I don't know about this? How come somebody doesn't know that being grounded makes pain go away? We'll be right back to today's show. But first, I need to ask you a question. Are you feeling stuck? Are you feeling like you don't have the support to go to the next level in your healing journey? Are you feeling like you wish you had a little bit more support from not only myself, but the Unbroken Nation? Well, my friend, I want to invite you to come and join our live weekly coaching sessions in Think Unbroken. All you have to do is go to keys, K-E-Y-S, keys.thinkunbroken.com to sign up and join us today with 100% money back, no questions asked, guaranteed and no contract or commitment every week for the next year. You can come and be a part of our live coaching sessions each Monday as we dive deep into not only answering your questions, but questions from the unbroken nation and help you take all of the information that you learn in the podcast, in the courses and other areas of this journey, bring them into your life and use it in a way that is practical, life-changing and transformative. So my friend, join us at keys.thinkunbroken.com. And we will see you this Monday. Yeah. And that's one of the things that's really fascinating, Clint, is that when I first off, and thank you for that story, I I love the backstory and I wanted to give you space to share it because of A, your expertise and B, because this is a subject matter nobody ever talks about. I've I've done my research now on it more and more over the years. And Uh one of the things I think would be really important is if we can actually create some context and maybe definitions around a few of these words so we don't lose okay. people as we get a little bit deeper. So can okay. you go, can you explain grounding to us? Okay. First of all, the earth has a natural, what we call a negative surface charge. Negative means no charge, means an abundance of free electrons. They're kind of like, uh, uh, it's, it's like, well, so it's, it's a store of electrons. I mean, they're actually stored in, on the surface of the earth. And so we connect everything electrical to the earth so that those free electrons can go up or down a ground rod and reduce charge. Uh, the most natural thing you can relate to would be lightning. Uh, if there's a buildup of positive charge in the clouds, negative on the earth, then there'll be a, a fissure of lightning go up into the air. And then the, the electrons will go up or down in order to reduce and, nor, and, and to reduce that charge in the clouds. And then the rain comes and then it all dissipates and goes away. So in the real world, like anybody working on electronic chips, software, gasoline, um, they, you know, gunpowder, fireworks, any of those kinds, they all have to be grounded when they're handling that so they don't create a spark from their clothing or something and create a fire. Um, <clears throat> so. Grounding is about reducing charge, preventing, because charge can create a spark and create a fire. Uh, and it can create electrical noise and disturbances, you know, in, in the um, electronics and signals and TV signals and sound and all of those kind of things. So it's, it's really about ele- maintaining the electrical stability. So as long as something is connected to the earth, 
then the earth will provide enough electrons automatically to prevent this noise or to prevent a fire. So it's, am I, am I answering the question? Am yeah, I yeah. touch? Yeah, okay. that makes sense. What, what I'm curious about, so if the, if the earth keeps us grounded, right. And what I, what came to mind as you were sharing this, I learned how to put computers together when I was about 15. And we yep. always had to have the anti-static mats and that's so yes. we didn't fry the motherboard. So we didn't fry the hard drives. And, and what I'm wondering is like, are we constantly getting fried right now because we're so removed from being grounded to the earth? And if so, is that negatively impacting our health, our inflammation, our pain? Well, <clears throat> what grounding is about what the, the discovery of, and you know, the end effect of grounding is what we found was <clears throat> Throughout all time, all living species on the planet were connected to the earth in some way, either fish in the oceans, whatever. How are we all got here? It doesn't matter. Um, but anyhow, we were always grounded. And it's only been like, well, in reality, it was 60 years ago, we invented plastics. The first thing we did was put them on the soles of our shoes, carpet our homes, and plasticize everything today. Everything is plastic, plasticized to the point, covered in plastic to the point that, so, so what this plastic does is it insulates you from the earth. When you, you no longer, the human body is no longer naturally grounded. To give you an, an example, uh, no, it's too early for that. Okay. Um, so you know, throughout all time, throughout all, all time from all the way back to the beginning, we were naturally grounded. Our bodies evolved in a grounded state. And it was only 1960 or a few years before we invented plastics. The first thing we did, like I said, put them on the shoes and insulate our environments. So, so all of a sudden we lost our ground. As a human, we no longer touched the ground. And so what happened was, and we didn't know it, it took us you know, 10 years to paste all this together. Inflammation, the word inflammation was not in the English language uh, in 19, uh, in 2000. So, you know, 20, 23 years ago, inflammation first entered the English language. And inflammation mean, is just what it says, inflame. And they refer to the body uh, full of inflammation. The body is on fire. Okay, so that's what grounding is about, is preventing fire. So, so anyhow, um, what we had to do is we had to, we learned early on that grounding reduced pain automatically. We did not know why it took us uh, six, seven years to figure that out. And, but we, we had to look at the body and look at, because nobody knew why grounding reduced pain. Uh, the only people that would even have a clue what was going on with grounding would be somebody with an, uh, an electronics background. Uh, even like you said, grounding yourself to prevent static to fry a motherboard, same concept here. So we're trying to prevent, um, instead of frying a motherboard, frying the body. So what happens is when you are, when you lose your ground, then your body's no longer negative. Other than that, you have a slight negative charge. The key here is you can't have inflammation in a grounded object, whether it's a computer or a person or an animal or a plant. It's like, to give you an idea, inflammation doesn't exist in the wild animal population. It only exists in humans and animals that live indoors with their owners. Mm. Okay. So that's, it's that's fascinating. Big, yeah. That's the big giveaway, but nobody looks at it from that way. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're an oyster. So anyhow, what we had to do is we had to trace down. So what in the body is causing inflammation? We know that by all we were doing is grounding the body and so it have, has earth potential or negative, this slight negative charge. Well, that negative charge is an abundance of free electrons that automatically move and reduce charge. It's automatic. It's, auto, you know, it's just automatic earth. Uh, it's, an, it's an automatic phenomenon. You don't have to do anything other than touch the earth. Uh, so as time went on, we, real, we learned that neutrophils, white blood cells in the body. If you have an injury or a pathogen, or you have a, um, 
you know, a damaged cell or something, you, the, the immune system releases or sends a neutrophil over to the site of the crime or the injury or whatever, and it releases what they call reactive oxygen species. Reactive means they're electrically charged. As soon as we learned that, then we knew we were on the right path. So <clears throat> these electrically charged molecules, then, I mean, it, it, so the neutrophil will wrap itself around a pathogen or a damaged cell and release these reactive oxygen species, and they will rip electrons from the damaged cell or the pathogen and destroy it. That's how the immune system works. So it's electrical. So then, well, we realized that, that, so when you have chronic pain in the body, then you have, it's like they say, you have inflammation, body is on fire. So what is causing the fire? So what we learned was when you are ungrounded, no longer naturally grounded, then your body is short free electrons. You don't have an abundance of free electrons or an abundance of redox potential. So, so what happens is if there's any remaining reactive oxygen species after the initial oxidative burst, then those remaining radicals will go and rip an electron from a healthy cell and damage it. It sends a message back to the immune system. Something's still here getting this, me. So the immune system sends another neutrophil. It does and it goes and fixes that problem. But in the process, it turns into a, a chronic uh, loop. It's an autoimmune loop. The autoimmune system is automatically uh, producing and creating reactive oxygen and, and trying to put out the fire, but it, it's actually, it's done its job, but it now these excess radicals are oxidizing healthy tissue. So the immune system now is trying to put out a fire that it itself is creating. And that's, is that because it's overcorrecting and trying to get you back to balance? Well, it's trying to reduce oxidative damage in your body. I mean, it's trying to reduce radicals or damaged tissue to eliminate them. But in the process, there's not enough free electrons to reduce the remaining radicals that are produced by the neutrophils. And if you don't reduce them, they're going to get, they're, they're, they're only going to last a few nanoseconds. So they quickly move and latch onto and steal an electron from a healthy cell, damage it, which provokes or promotes another, the immune system to release another um, oxidative burst. And so it, the body is just slowly burning. It's on fire. It's slowly burning. Um, that, that makes a lot of sense. So, so in that, with understanding that and how that occurs, are there like, obviously looking at and looking at being un ungrounded, right? We always have shoes on yeah. nobody really, like I live in a city, so there's no backyards yeah. anymore. The right. office is covered in carpet, the cars, the shoes, uh, you know, you see people and they're, they're the heels of their shoes are now two inches thick. Oh, so we know that those elements are keeping us ungrounded. Yes. What about the impact of the electromagnetic elements that are in our environment? Wi-Fi, wireless headphones, cell phones, uh, televisions, things like this. Are these things negatively impacting our groundedness as well? No, grounding has 100% to do with physical contact with the earth, okay. which is a nat natural, it's a natural phenomenon. If you are ungrounded, it's just like if you were to unground some of your equipment in your studio, then you may get noise or you may get issues. So uh, <clears throat> these electric fields and static electricity, they can create pops and char, you know, and noise and, and things like that. Um, but they're, they are a secondary stressor, but they're not the promoter of autoimmune disease or any of these inflammation related health disorders. Um, but if you're ungrounded, then your, your whole system is off because the, the human body was always grounded. It was meant to be grounded. Uh, we are, you know, we, we were from the earth. We 
people live on the earth, we live from the earth and, and we spent, you know, I mean, we are the, to me, I put it this way, we're the earth of walking around, you know, we, we're part of everything that exists, you know, as the earth. And, um, <laughs> so when we disconnect and we lose our ground or we lose that natural immunity from fire, from inflammation in the body, uh, when that's gone, then the body, these, um, healthy or these issues manifest. So you stress, the body is becoming stressed because it's on fire or it's, it's, it's no longer, it's positively charged. It's not negatively charged. And, and when this, ha when this happens, does this start to put you into like a sympathetic state in terms of the central nervous system? Well, what happens is, no, it's just the opposite. Uh, <clears throat> when you're ungrounded, then you're more likely to be in a, what, a chronic, chronically elevated sympathetic state. Hey, what's up on Broken Nation? We'll be right back to today's episode, but I want to take a moment and invite you to Think Unbroken Conference. That's right. Our next conference is happening right around the corner this December with amazing speakers from around the world who are leaders in personal development, trauma education, mindset, and more. All you have to do to register to watch for free, that's right, zero dollars, come and join us, is go to myunbrokenlife.com, register and sign up. You can get access to to the free event, watch it live with us this December. It'll be myself speaking along with amazing human beings like Anthony Trucks, Jamie Bronstein, Leslie Logan, and a special interview that I'm doing with Dr. Gabor Mate that has never before been released. So come and join us, myunbrokenlife.com. All you have to do is put in your email. We'll send you over the registration. You'll be able to come and join us, watch live. And then if you want access to the recordings or more information there for you to keep them forever. But in the meantime, go sign up block it off on your calendar. This is going to be a transformational experience that you do not want to miss. Head over to myunbrokenlife.com to register for free. And until next time, be unbroken. And Meaning if the, your sympathetic nervous system senses everything in the environment, uh, noise, sound, temperature, sun, you know, just everything in the, in the environment. So it's, and then you have a parasympathetic, which is, uh, releases hormones to, dampen, you know, like if, if they're, if you're in a fight or flight state, which then your cortisol becomes elevated, this is all related to this, the sympathetic senses, um, you know, a threat and then your fight or flight kicks in, your cortisol skyrockets. And then you have a parasympathetic over here that, uh, releases, um, you know, hormones to dampen the effect of this cortisol and, and so on. And that's all good and it works. Uh, it works really well in the animal world. Um, and it did in, the, but today we, there's so much noise and so much interference. We, we lost our senses, but, but anyhow, so what, what's going on with everybody is you're, everybody is chronically stressed because they're ungrounded and their body is very sensitive to all of these. Uh, things that go on in our environment, our relationships, just everything that's going on and, and all of the emotions. And so what happens is we have so, we have so much stress in our lives that our parasympathetic nervous system, which operates, you know, releases hormones and, uh, to dampen the effect of this stress, eventually it becomes exhausted and it can no longer buffer the cortisol or the chronically elevated sympathetic stress. And so then the body becomes fatigued. And then uh, eventually, if you don't feel, continue to live that way, then the cortisol continues to build. And eventually it's going to create anxiety, irritability, depression, uh, and maybe lead, and then it leads on to a chronic health disorder, like uh, an immune autoimmune disorder. And, um, and it, it just goes on and on. Then it'll, if you don't take care of it, then you're, you're going to end up going to the doc and you starts out with the ladies with fibromyalgia. Then it goes to lupus, MS, then to cancer, and then cardiovascular disease. All of these are, all of these health disorders are because the immune system or immune systems are compromised. You know, I, I always like to say this, you know, health is the body's most natural state. Go sit in a rock in the woods and watch the animals. 
they have health and it's natural. It's, it's a gift. Uh, if you do not have health and you have pain in your body, then something you're doing, something in your environment, something going on is interfering with your immune system's ability to maintain health. And yeah. uh, so, you, so you have to remove what that is or add back in, in this case, ground, because it needs ground. It yeah. needs those free electrons from the earth to prevent fire in the body, to prevent the inflammation for the immune system to function like it was designed. That makes perfect sense because so often you hear people talk about the, the research and the evidence about being in nature, about getting reconnected to Mother Earth, about the fact that, and I agree with you entirely. I mean, like, really, you break it down as humans, we just happen to be a really, really evolved animal, right? Yes. But you look back at any of the lineage of, of the development of the human species, we were outside for the vast majority of it. We've only been yeah. inside dwellers for, you know, a hundred years now, if that. So one yes. of the things that I'm wondering here, Clint, for people who are listening to this and they're like, okay, I hear you. I, I feel like I'm probably ungrounded. I don't even know the last time my feet touched grass. Like what are some of the things that people can do? What are like three things that people could start executing and adding to their life to start to get grounded again? Yeah. The, the thing that, that I teach the most, the first, uh, when I first discovered the health effects of grounding. And I was working with, you know, NIH and, and other people that, that do research and the, you know, California health sciences and so on. <clears throat> and the first thing that they told me to do that, you know, we understand what you're doing and, um, but before you go out and tell the people, you have to have a no cost solution and then you have to have a low cost solution so that mm -hmm. people can incorporate it into their lives. And so the number one thing I've always promoted and always will is, and especially for women, especially for women, at the end of the day, I mean, you've been, uh, you're operating on cortisol all day long, you know, from all of the fight or flight and all of the stress of life, stresses of life. And so at night, when you come home, you have to drain that cortisol out of your body and the inflammation related to it. So you have to, you have to come home at night. If you can't do anything else, then you take your shoes off, go out in the backyard, put your bare feet on the earth and sit there for 30 minutes. It will change your life. I mean, you will be a different person because what you're doing is you're draining the inflammation, resetting the body, then, uh, and then you're going to feel better. Then you can be more present and you don't have that anxiety and irritability and, you know, um, all the things that go with being ungrounded. And, uh, that's one thing. Um, you know, sometimes taking a, a, a hot bath is good and, um, and those kind of things, but, but you need a routine, uh, you need to be grounded for some, and the number one thing, you know, any amount of grounding is good, but more is better because in nature, you would be grounded 24 seven. You could not have autoimmune disease, inflammation related health disorders. And that's everything from autism to lupus, to cancer, to cardiovascular disease, to you name it, there's a hundred of them. And, uh, but these are all inflammation related health disorders. So, so you want to be grounded as much as possible and reduce the inflammation as much as possible. So yeah, along the way, when we did all of our research, we developed a, a, a handful of products called their, their ground planes, meaning they are conductive like bed mats or sheets, uh, mm -hmm. that you can put on your bed connected to a, a, an electrical ground and the ground, which is connected to the earth. Then when you come home at night, it's, you know, you only do this one time, then you, but you you know, put, put your sheet over the top of it and then you just lay down and go to sleep. You don't have to do any extra work. You don't have to do anything. You just lay down and go to sleep and then you're grounded all night long, which is really important if you can do this because, uh, during sleep is when the body heals and restores itself. So during that process, you need to reduce as much inflammation as you can, because it's not supposed to be there in the first place, but so that the immune system can restore and re repair the body and restore and bring the body, return the body to normal. Because the immune system only knows to do one thing, return the body to normal. If you remove the stresses that are interfering with the immune system's ability to function, then it will only do one thing, 
it will return your health to normal. Mm. It's automatic. You see it in the animal world. And I've seen, I mean, I, it's, we're so removed that it's hard to see this, but, but, but anyhow, so there's mm. these sleep mats or those are products that we developed during our research uh, projects to, in order to test the benefits of everything and how to ground people and, and to do all of the studies. There's about 35, 40 studies that are published now. And um, we have the the book, the movie, all those things now. But, but anyhow, so the best thing to do is experiment with it. Put your feet on the earth, on the grass, and notice the changes in your body and your respiration and your heart rate. Uh, I could go on and on about studies about, you know, how it changes your blood viscosity, you know, how your circulation improves. For the ladies, I tell them it's a beauty product. If you put your feet on the earth for, for 30 minutes, you're going to look 10 years younger because mm-hmm. your your blood normalizes, your blood viscosity normalizes. The Now you have improved circulation. Blood can get into the capillaries, clean up the damage and the inflammation in your in your uh, tissue. And, and so you're, you're going to look healthier. You're going to feel better. Um, what about... I have a question I have to ask because I, I live in a inclement weather climate and Perfect. it gets freezing cold here, man. And so yes. I'm wondering, like, when you live in most of Northern America, across the hemisphere, what yep. what can people do in, like, late fall, winter, early spring when there's ice, there's snow on the ground? Are we still, like, go put your feet out on the ground and, like, freeze your toes off? Like, what do you do then? No, that's not probably, that's not a very good idea. Um, you know, it's like, I can get into it technically, but, uh, you know, most of the animals, they don't live standing up in the snow, you know, I mean, they, they have burrows and they have, or do this and do that and whatever, <clears throat> but they, they have skin and, and, you know, they're protected because of their, the way they are. Um, the reason when we did the studies, we ask ourselves, okay, what is the best thing we can do to help people be grounded at home uh, during sleep, the time when the body heals and restores itself? And that's when we decided we would take these ground planes that we were using for our studies and try to make products that people could put on their bed, plug it into their electrical ground because the electrical ground in your house, that third round hole, in the electrical outlet goes to the earth. That's an earth ground. Mm. So the only way you're going to touch the earth comfortably <laughs> is to use, use your electrical ground, or you can drive a ground rod in if you don't have a normal ground and run a wire into your house and connect it to one of these conductive sleep mats and lay down and go to sleep and like sleeping outdoors in the pasture, like I did when I was a kid. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because I, you know, one of the things that I do is I give myself sun exposure barefoot in winter and I can only tolerate that depending on the day for maybe two minutes, some days longer. And I realize it's not always sustainable. You know, I, I think there's, there's so much information you've put out in the world, so much that we can find and access. And, and personally, I wanted to have this conversation with you because you know, I go back to times where I've traveled the world, where I've lived on beaches, where I've lived on islands, where I've lived in places where I can be accessible to nature. And as someone who has anxiety and PTSD, you know, it's been incredible. And to even end this conversation, thinking to myself, the second this is over, I'm going to go outside to the park across the street and stand barefoot for half an hour. Right. (laughs) Um, But obviously we can only cover so much information in a short period of time. Before I ask you my last question, can you tell everybody where they can find out more about you and about grounding? Yeah, they can go to ultimatelongevity.com uh, and there's they have all the information. Uh, the studies are all there. Uh, the movie's there. They can get the book there. Um, but anything, anything you want to know, you can go to that website and they'll supply whatever you know information anybody would like, or if anybody has questions, um, but you know, just that's the, the easiest resource for everybody to go and take a look at all of this and learn a little bit about it. And, uh, Brilliant. 
Yeah. yeah. And of course, we'll put the links in the show notes for the yeah. audience. Um, sure. My last question for you, my friend, what does it mean to you to be unbroken? Well, unbroken, uh, I spent a lot of my life broken in many different ways, emotionally, uh, physically sometimes. Uh, you know, a lot of pain, a lot of stress in my life. And the, the thing, the most important thing that, uh, and that's how, that's why they granted today I'm, I'm 78 years old. I have perfect health. I don't have cardiovascular disease. I don't have any health issues. I no longer have, uh, anything. So unbroken means to be healthy and happy and, uh, being in nature provides that for me and being grounded to the earth, it connects it to the earth. Uh, that provides it to me. So it's really about happiness and wholeness. And um, you're just a nicer person. You're a better person. You're, you're of more value to the, to, you know, to everybody that you can have, that you're involved with or come in contact with. So you're an asset. Uh, so being unbroken is the only place to be. So do whatever you gotta do to get there. I love that, my friend. Thank you so much for being here. Unbroken Nation, thank you for listening. Please like, subscribe, comment, share, tell a friend. And until next time, my friends, be unbroken. I'll right. see ya. Hey, Unbroken Nation, we'll be right back to the show, but I wanted to let you know that you can grab a copy of my first book, Think Unbroken, Understanding and Overcoming Childhood Trauma, for free. If you go to book.thinkunbroken.com, you can download the PDF ebook version of the book and get everything that I know about the baseline of healing trauma for free downloaded to your email right now. Just go to book.thinkunbroken.com to download your copy of Think Unbroken, Understanding and Overcoming Childhood Trauma for a PDF for your phone. Again, that is book.thinkunbroken.com. Thank you so much for listening to Think Unbroken. Please share this episode with someone who could use it and help us move forward in our mission of ending generational trauma in our lifetime. And if you would, please take five seconds to pop on iTunes or Spotify, hit that five star, leave a review. And you can also reach out to us on social at Michael Unbroken or at Think Unbroken. And of course, you can check out our YouTube channel at Think Unbroken. Thank you for being a part of Unbroken Nation, my friends. And until next time, be unbroken. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of life coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program.